Welcome to Fast Track, I'm Thalia Pellegrini. So far, the most visible impact on travel of the credit crunch has been on the airline industry. We've seen oil prices rise and airlines fall. But what about the hotel industry? Well, it's perhaps no surprise that occupancy rates around the world are said to be falling and are expected to do so well into 2009. So here at Fast Track, we asked ourselves if the hotel industry's struggle could be to the traveller's advantage. It's now the best time in a long time to get some five-star fun at a great deal. It's obvious that an empty hotel or even a half-empty hotel is bad for business. But equally, it stands to reason that slashing your prices is bad for business as well. So what is a posh hotel to do in times of economic strife? Drop their prices or hold tight onto their rates and wait for the turbulent times to pass. Recession ripples have already begun to spread. Last week, the Intercontinental Group hit the headlines with their chief exec admitting in the press that trading last month showed what he called a sharp deterioration. As the world's largest hotel business, including properties across the ratings board, it's the upmarket Intercontinental hotels that are seeing the biggest drop in occupancy. So it would seem a fair hope that travellers might see a consumer benefit of dropping occupancy at the top end of the hotel market. Tell me, what's more important to a hotel like the Dorchester? To have the hotel half empty but to maintain your prices or to have full occupancy at discounted prices? I'm a firm believer that cutting of the price is a very short-term strategy. You know, you are committed and, and, and focused on maintaining your brand proposition. I mean, the brand proposition is something you have built, and the equity, equity in new brand you have built over, over centuries in certain cases, but in, in our situation for over 70 years. You're not going to compromise and sacrifice that over a short period or short crisis. At the end of the day, I think you need to find the right price in order to be able to balance occupancy and pricing uh, in, in, in the right space. But at the end of the day, for us, we, we, we try to maintain and stay focused on, 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 on being truthful to our brand. That's a point of view echoed elsewhere. If somebody is not traveling, it's not because uh, he's finding our hotels 10 or 15 percent uh, more expensive. So at this point in time, we are concentrating more on uh, what value addition we can uh, give. Uh, but we don't believe uh, that uh, discount is uh, the answer right now. But here at Fast Track, we don't give up easily. So we called a handful of five-star hotels around the world as potential guests to see if we could negotiate directly with the hotel and get a good discount. Well, of the five hotels we called, we got money off the rack rate at three of them. The drop wasn't substantial, however, and two of the hotels refused outright to budge on price. Five-star hotels are reluctant to, to drop their rates really, I think, for two reasons. Firstly, because the demand isn't there. So by dropping their rates, they're not stimulating the demand into the hotels anyway. And secondly, once you do drop your rates and they go to a certain level, it takes years to get those rates back up to the levels they were previously. So if a hotel does drop its rates, they might gain a slight increase in occupancy levels, but the overall performance of the hotel will go down, and that might take two or three, even four years to get back once the market picks up again. So it's really not in their best interest to do it at the moment because there's no upside for them. Waiting out the economic downturn applies to hotels being built as well. With an impending global recession affecting lending, new hotels are generally taking longer to be completed. But some see the current situation as temporary. This is or will be the Park Plaza Westminster Bridge. It's a huge project right in the centre of London, as you can see behind me. Now, it's due to be finished in 2010, and I'm told it will be finished on time, despite the fact the recession is biting here in the capital. That has not affected the building schedule. I think the main thing is the uncertainty that may present itself in terms of the size of hotel that you may build, and we're building a 1,000-bedroom hotel with conference facilities to match. And people sometimes get very concerned about whether or not the business is sustainable. I think having had many years of experience in the industry going back to the recession of the early 90s and after September the 11th, those were difficult times, but business always comes back. It's very cyclical. And when you're building hotels, you're building for the next 10, 20 years. You don't worry about 
the, the next year or year and a half, albeit that we do have to work through those times. So dreams of five-star breaks at a cut-down price are fading fast, but for the average traveller for whom high-end is a treat rather than the norm, there are deals to be found for the next six months at least. If you're prepared to look online, if you're prepared to go to directly to the hotel's own website, if they've agreed or if they have the mindset that they're not going to drop their rates, they're going to try and find other ways of stimulating business to the hotel. And that generally means packages, that means upgrades, that means including things that they normally wouldn't include. So there will definitely be good, good deals out there. It'll be a question, I think, of just finding them. We are looking at how we can give them added value in terms of uh, meals or supplements. Uh, okay. but. By and large, we are not looking at the, uh, the discount rule because I think uh, uh, for us the brand is important and we see this as a very temporary slowdown. Well, you've seen how we've got on trying to get discounts on five-star hotels, but we want to know your experiences. Have you managed to do a deal or have you found booking clerks pretty resistant to budging? We want to know, so get in touch with us via email, fasttracktravel at bbc.co.uk. For now, though, time for all the latest travel news.